Semi-final match in the lightweight division in the blue gi, Henato Canuto taking on Murillo Amaral of Alliance in the white gi. Now, we haven't seen Amaral today because his quarterfinal match, unfortunately, uh, couldn't go ahead. He beat Rodrigo Freitas yesterday and Pablo Lavaselli to make it through into the later rounds. But his opponent, Jonathan Alves, hurt his hand yesterday in his match with Guillermo Hosha and was unable to compete in the quarterfinal. So, Murillo advances through by default straight into this semi-final match against Hinato Canuto, who had a pretty good warm-up in that earlier match against Levi, Levi Jones. Absolutely. Incredible, incredible match. It ended him in a guard pass. It was the most significant moment of the match, really late, and won that match 3-0. Um, very, very impressive. Canuto showed... <laughs> He showed in that match against Levi Jones-Leary that not only has he got the smarts to win strategically, but he also has the technique, the jiu-jitsu to win decisively. And that was the key in that match against Jones-Leary, that he played a very smart game in shutting down Levi's attacks and then firing back with a guard pass late in the match. Now look at that flying attack here from Hinata Kuduto. Triangle to a plot of transition and now coming underneath looking for the back grab in the pants. Man, you cannot give this guy an inch. Interesting how he was playing off the wrestle up and the and the flying attack too. He had the threat of both and now coming up. Amaral manages to scramble his way out of it. Goes back into the center, but gotta be careful with uh, with Hinato Kuduto, man. He's so quick. Yeah, again, and he kind of stays in the seated guard position where he, he has a collar grip. It looks like he might come up for an ankle pick or snap the head down or come up for a wrestle up. So, you know, you're kind of backing up, but then he shoots up these flying triangles slash omoplata, and so he really plays off your comfort going backward and forward at the same time, making both dangerous. Interesting, nice uh, pass attempt here. But now into deep half as Canuto has a good grip on the belt too with the, with the right hand offs change to the leg and now back into his, his open guard. Just goes to show them real arm around. He can put the pressure on. He scored some big wins yesterday. I mean, if you consider the fact that he beat Pablo Lavaselli in his opening match and then beat Rodrigo Freitas, the veteran, in his second round match, he earned his spot here. And look at this going high, but nice Beautiful. sweep there from Hinato Canuto. Yeah, incredible work of the deep half. That was the second time going in. The first time he opted to go back to the open guard and then he went back into himself and was able to score. Two point lead now for the checkmat black belt. And as we saw on top, uh, Canuto is a master at dealing with grips, right? So you see Amaral maybe going into the close guard now, starting to really slow Hinata down. We talked about this before. With big, powerful, explosive opponents. Sometimes close guard is the best answer to get them to stop moving, start to tie them up and start to expose the back, the arm, the chokes. And Hinato opting to kind of have this like double stiff arm position on both of the lapels rather than the classic like collar and sleeve or controlling the sleeve to stand up and open the guard. Doesn't look like he's in too much of a rush, so just keeping Murillo's back pinned to the mat, not really aiming to stand up here and open up. Got to be careful that he doesn't get penalized for doing so. Yes. It's a um, very dangerously close to a stalling tactic. Yeah, we do see him start to step up a little bit, but uh, some collar grips coming in from Murillo, really looking for this uh, cross-collar position. And now into a waiter sweep. On the opposite ankle now is Murillo. Almost at the halfway mark here too. So this match has gone by very quickly here, not to holding that two-point lead. I'm looking very comfortable here in like this squatted guard position, but that lapel that Murillo has wrapped around with his right leg anchored in, 
means that he can really use that external rotation, point his right knee out, and kind of tilt Hinato back, or come to the other side, which is what we're seeing him come up to the left. But not enough, and Hinato returns to the feet, or to the knees. And Hinato does need to be careful with the, with the stalling penalty here, yeah. but he also, um, he also knows that Morillo is going to be the start to start to be the one that feels is feeling the pressure. He's feeling like he needs to score. He's more than halfway into the match, so you want to avoid the stalling. But at the same time, if your partner starts to get desperate, they start to make mistakes. So if you force that pressure, it can be a great tactic to open them up. We also don't see too many stalling calls once those lapels get wrapped up. Because Morello has the lapel around Hinato's left leg, it's hard to call a stalling penalty for Hinato because you could argue that he, you know, he's not able to stand up with his left right. leg. He's a little bit locked in. So that makes things a little bit more sticky from the ref's perspective. Oh, look at that though, you see a morale, that solid elbow control, the way that he was kind of kicking his hips out to the side for a second, could be a good old-fashioned upper body attack, but Hinato Knuto manages to square back up. And Interesting collar control here from Hinato, he almost looked like he was going for like a little bit of a thrust stroke there for a second. Yeah, he is kind of yes. diving. In, the, in Brazil, they call this a massa pau. Literally means to knead the bread. Mm -hmm. It's a good old fashioned inside the close guard. Very old fashioned technique, but very effective in frustrating your opponent from bottom into opening the close guard. And you can see that he's driving his fist, holding the collar, but driving his fist into the neck. Not necessarily the kind of tech, unless you have a big weight advantage, not going to technique, uh, not going to tap your opponent, but still. As it, to had the, what they're doing. Had the effect it necessary because now Maru has opened his guard and we could see Hinato try and get moving, but. Big sweep attempt here from Murillo and they are side, they are both on their side, so we have to be careful with, uh, even if Hinato comes back up, he could risk the advantage. No advantage awarded here, so still 2-0 with two and a half minutes left back in the close guard. And again, I do think this was a really smart strategy from Hinato. He, for a second, it was a little risky with the penalty call, but I think putting the pressure on Murillo and not forcing the action that Murillo would actually need, like to create his sweeps and opportunities, mentally, you know, that can be very, very frustrating when you know you need to score and you're stuck, right? And your opponent on top is not creating any action. Right. Less than two minutes to go. Hinato in the blue on top, still holding on to his two-point lead. And not insistent on opening the guard, but Murillo going for those collar grips again, trying to break the posture down of Hinato, creating a good angle with his hips here. He could have an arm attack or potentially a choke. This is good for Hinato Canuto. This is a good way of opening the closed guard. All the way around the opposite side of the leg. Creates a lot of torque on this knee here of Hinato. Definitely a strong sweeping position and even can sometimes come up to the back from there, Murillo, but then he opts to go for the opposite side leg, go underneath with that right hand. Definitely a more strategic pace in these last couple of minutes. Murillo Amaral seems to be a little uh, out of ideas in attacking from bottom. Yeah, it's not usually the style we see from Hinato, but you know, seeing as this is the semifinal of the World Championships, I'm not totally surprised. He's a little more conservative right, right. than usual. But now he does need to be careful with the triangle Numa Plata attacks here from Murillo. Oh, or the arm. He was going high for the arm bar, but Hinato Canuto ripped his arm out. But hey, look at this. Here's a sweep attempt from Amaral. Wow. Beautiful to come balance. Out on the back from now. Hinato. He's got 20 seconds to work. Hinato Canuto holding on to the ankles. Very close here. Very, very close. Hinato cannot afford to be swept here. 
does have the ankle lock grip. He could go belly down here. Has a knee bar here. Inado Canuto briefly had a knee bar. Desperately trying to come on top is Amaral, but Inado Canuto will ride that two point lead to a win. And the Czech Matt Black Belt goes through into the lightweight final. The first confirmed finalist here of the 2021 IBJJF World Championships in the lightweight division, Renato Canuto. Another opportunity to try and take gold. He came close a couple of years ago, fought Lucas Lepri in the finals of the World Championships, took silver. Now he will return in search of gold. The Czech map black belt from São Vicente, Brazil. Based now in Las Vegas, a second opportunity to take the world title. Is that flying attack, Kendall? Yeah, that was a big opener here, and he uses those wrestle ups and flying attacks together. And that deep half sweep to put him on top for the two-point lead. This was close here at the end, too. A lot of good pressure from Murillo. And able to defend the, the last second sweep by the Alliance Black Belt. Hinato Kunduto was able to hold on to that lead and put himself in the finals.